Amid the worsening crisis in Yemen, Arab leaders today agreed to form a combined military force. The ongoing fighting in Yemen has taken a turn for the worse. So where we're at today uh, in Yemen, starting in 2002. Saudi Arabia getting directly involved in the conflict in Yemen. The strikes hit targets across the country, including in the capital, Sana'a. I guess it's natural. A complicated country like Yemen, somewhere people don't really know much about anyway, suddenly emerges into the news headlines with the Saudi airstrikes on the country. Now the media are going to try and explain the situation to their audience, but at the same time are trying to understand it for themselves. Mistakes are going to happen. The problem is when those mistakes become so entrenched that they start being perceived as the reality. So before that happens, I'm going to explain three inaccuracies that I've been seeing in the news media and try and explain why they're completely wrong. The Shiite Houthi rebels then revolted, pushing the president and government to resign. What these new developments mean for the already smoldering Sunni-Shia split in that region. The Houthis in Yemen are Shiites. Do you believe this is uh, strictly a tribal issue? The narrative on this has been really simplistic. I guess it's an easy way to explain anything in the Middle East. The idea that religion is behind everything and that this is somehow illogical to a Western perspective. Look, there is a sectarian element to this conflict. The Houthis are predominantly Zaydi Shia, and they are backed by Iran, which is in a regional battle with Saudi Arabia for dominance in the Middle East. But it's much more complex than that. It's about resources, power, and local regional politics. Now, a person in eastern or southern Yemen doesn't like the Houthis, and they don't really want them coming in. But it's not so much about religion and the Houthis' religious identity, but about local issues and the idea that those people are invaders coming into their land. If you ask someone in Yemen what they are, they won't tell you they're Sunni or Shia. They'll tell you they're Hirak, Houthi, Socialist, Islah, GPC. I.e. they're referring to political identities, maybe even regional and tribal ones, but not religious or sectarian ones. It's simple. If you're going to be looking at Yemen through this religious or sectarian prism, then you're going to get it wrong. Over the past week alone, General, the Shia rebels have taken Sana'a They've moved down to Taiz and then over to Aden. The Houthis are a group of militias that staged a coup. Okay, the Houthis are being supported by Iran. Almost every single news report I see on Yemen will talk about how it's all the Houthis. They're the ones advancing, they're the ones leading the charge. But they're missing out one group, led by one particular person. Now, this person led Yemen for 33 years, and his military men still control most of the army. His name should be in every single news report. It's Ali Abdullah Saleh, in case you're wondering. Saleh may have left power in 2011, but to put it bluntly, he still controls the military. And it's that military that continues to advance across the country with their Houthi allies close behind them. Now, if anyone's dominating Yemen militarily right now, it's the Yemeni army. In the presence of ISIS and, and Al-Qaeda. Sunni extremists Al-Qaeda are also vying with the Houthis and the government for control of the country. They're fighting their own war against both the government and the Houthi rebels and have taken control of large parts of the country. These maps infuriate me. Firstly, the situation is constantly fluid and changing, so the map's a bit pointless. And secondly, if you were to believe this map, you think Al-Qaeda ran half of Yemen, which is wrong. Yes, Yemen is host to possibly one of the strongest Al-Qaeda affiliates in the world, but there are numerous militias vying for control up and down the country, and Al-Qaeda are just one of them. Their presence in an area doesn't necessarily mean they control it. Now, they do have a presence in Mukalla, yes, they're almost certainly in control of most of the city. However, let's just say they may have had a helping hand from certain other players to get that far. There are other things as well, like the idea that this is simply about Saudi Arabia and Iran, ignoring the local actors on the ground, or the idea that those fighting the Houthis and Saleh have pro Hadi loyalists, supporting the former president, when in fact they're usually locals who are simply defending their areas, and most of the time they actually support secession. It's important to bear these things in mind when you're trying to understand what's going on in Yemen, and hopefully, maybe, things might start to make sense. And one last thing, it's pronounced Houthis. Not Houthis, Hooters, or anything else you might be hearing.